Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and today I'm bringing you a video all about creating brushes in Procreate. If you don't know what Procreate is, it's an app on the iPad. I've got the second generation iPad Pro 12.9 inch with the Apple Pencil, so it's super quick. It's really nice. It did a review. You should definitely go and check it out. And basically, I'm gonna show you how to create some brush pens on here very easily and how I create them. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. So Procreate is all about using brushes to create something. So it's kind of like Photoshop, but it hasn't got some of the tools and it's for an illustrator and its workflow. So basically we've got a bunch of things that we can use in here. I have got a brush here called Wet Acrylic and I've got a few different ones, but as you can see, it's a really nice brush. It gives off a really cool vibe and texture to your work. But let's say I wanted this brush to be a brush pen now. I didn't want it to be just like a wet acrylic brush. I want it to act like a brush pen. Well, there's a few different ways of doing this. Actually, no, there's only one way of doing this. I'm just so used to saying that in Illustrator. But there's only one way of doing this, and that is by changing the brush itself. So as you can see there, I just clicked on the brush again, and it's come up with a bunch of these different options. So when you go to your brushes over here in Artistic and go to Wet Acrylic, just swipe to the left, and press duplicate. And that's gonna ensure that you don't ruin the first one that you had, so you've got more room to play with. So you click on that brush and you can see we've got a bunch of these different menus here that we can choose from to change. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is in backwards order, because this is how you should work in backwards order. So source is basically the source of your brush. If you know anything about Photoshop brushes, you'll know that the source means a lot. So you've got this shape source and also the grain source right here. So your shape source is the shape of the brush and how it will be. And the grain is the filled in part in the middle. So that's like the grain of the brush. So what we can do is we can edit this brush to be how we want to. And we do this by just clicking on the shape source and going to Pro Library. And we've got basically a bunch of different shapes to choose from. Now all these shapes here are basically brush shapes as well as some of these ones. But as you go further down, you see some textures or some grains and they're basically just blocks or squares, like one and one aspect ratio squares. So don't try and use these for brushes, otherwise you'll have a bad time with them. But these are kind of like the brush shapes here and we've got a bunch to choose from. But not only that, you can actually scan in or bring in your own shapes to use, which is like incredibly cool. So what we can do is go to the shape source again, like here, Go to photos or anywhere here. Go to photos, camera roll, and you can find anything in here. I haven't got anything because this iPad's pretty new, so I haven't got anything yet. Same with the shape source. You can bring your own textures in or whatever. So this is completely customizable. So I'm gonna keep with this shape source right now, and I'm gonna go to general. Now general is basically the general properties of the brush, so the size you've got here, you've got the properties, like whether it orients to the iPad screen, you've got the use stamp preview, the size limits and the opacity limits. So this is the generalized overview of how big it's gonna be and the way that it's kind of going to act on the paper or on the screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring down the size a little bit and bring up the minimum size, because I'm gonna create some lettering brushes in this. And I'm also gonna bring uh, the minimum all the way up. because so I don't want any opacity at the minute to be affected on here. So the, the maximum opacity and the minimum. So I'm gonna bring that up. And as you can see up here, we've got like this little preview box that we can play around in to see how it will affect when we do it. So now I'm gonna just test this out and see it on my screen. Okay, we've got, we've got some smaller brush here. We've got a nice grain to it. It looks very textury, which is what I wanted for this click free brush. Awesome. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to the pencil tab down here. Now the pencil tab is where it creates or changes based upon this little guy here, which is the Apple pencil, uh, the hundred dollar, the most expensive pencil, but the best pencil in the world. And uh, basically you can change all these different attributes here. So here we've got like the opacity meter. So I'm going to bring the opacity directly back to zero because this basically means the harder you press or the lighter you press, the more opaque it's going to be or the less opaque. The size here, I'm gonna bring up to, as you can see here, 100. So you see the title here says pressure and this is all the attributes directly affected by the pressure. I'm going to go ahead and change the interface to a light one so you can see it better. So what I'm gonna do is bring up the size here and as you can see, as I bring up the size, you can see the shape changes. Now maybe we wanna test this out. So let's have a look and see how well it works. 
So we've got a nice size to that. I think we can go a bit more in the maximum size. So we'll just go to the maximum size in the general tab, come back, and as you can see, we've got the max size there. But you can change yours. So basically it means this is a light press and this is a dark press, and this is how much size variance we're going to have. And this is directly affected by the general tab because we've got the maximum and the minimum. So let's bring that min maximum back down like so. Awesome. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to the dynamics or wait a minute. Yeah, we're going to go to dynamics. Now dynamics is pretty straightforward. It's kind of like the fall offs and all the things you find in Photoshop. So you don't really need to do anything in this for now, but we can go to grain. This will change the movement of the grain. I'm not really bothered about it. We can go to filtered if we wanted to and see what happens when we press filtered. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we'll keep the filtered. I just generally play around with these ones. The shape as well. I don't really do much in here for this kind of brush, but sometimes I press this thing here, which helps me quite a lot with the brush pen experience. So I'm just gonna press that on as well. And what this does is it actually changes or keeps the brush angle or the shape of the brush to where you want it to be corresponding with the pencil. So just like a normal brush. Now, finally, the most important tab is the stroke tab over here. Now, this tab here basically allows you to create the smooth lines that you want. And this is where I am mostly. I'm not sure about anyone else, but this is what I am mostly. In fact, I'm going to change the name of this to new brush pen. Just so I don't get confused. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring out streamline. This one is huge for any calligraphers out there. This streamline tab Actually, I'll show you. So this is without streamline. I'm going to try and write, you know, uh, hello. So hello. You can see here I'm struggling to keep the consistency correct. Okay, so that doesn't look too great right there. But if I was to bring streamline in, you can make a huge difference. So I'll bring it up to 73 or something. You'll see a huge difference. Now what streamline does is it literally just streamlines your paths or your pressure and the way your brush is going to be. It makes it so the lines are a lot smoother. It's kind of like the smooth tool in action on here. And I have that on nearly all the time on different variances for different brushes. Now spacing is a strange one. The more spacing you have, the more imprints of the brush you'll have. So less imprints of the brush. So you can see here we've got a bunch of different spacing. And then if we bring it all the way back down, you can see all these imprints are brought together to create the actual brush stroke. Now that is how brushes are created, just little tiny dots like this in different variances. Now, I don't like the tapers that we've got going on here, so I'm gonna get rid of them. What the tapers do is they make sure that the start and the end of the stroke, it's small. So it's like kind of like, if it was like this, it tapers off like that forcefully. But I don't want that because it kind of, ruins my kind of lettering experience. Now here you can see I've got this like kind of lettering going on here and this looks really nice, this brush, and we haven't done much. One thing to keep in mind when creating a brush pen in Procreate is to keep the thins and thicks not too thin and not too thick. Now when I'm creating lettering like an E for instance, I'm gonna start off thin and go thick. So I'm gonna add pressure and then come back off again. Now you can see here that the thins and thicks aren't too bad, uh, but if we increased the size, it's like 121. You'll see that it doesn't look correct. And you can do this with certain styles of lettering, but it doesn't look too great. So make sure that the thins and thicks aren't too massive in this little panel here. We'll go to like 40 or something. And this is where we just play around with it really to get the right one. You can see here, I've got really nice consistency right there. So the next brush I'm gonna show you is the one that you saw at the start of the video, which is this one. So I'm just gonna write brush. This one is a lot different in a few cases and it's a bit more difficult to do depending on how much time you've got and how much knowledge you have. But this one basically, as you can see, is kind of squared off like a marker brush pen. You can see here when I click, we've got this kind of like shape going on there. So it's all squared off. Now, if we go and take a look at this brush by clicking on it and going to the shape sources, you can see that the shape source is a shape that I've brought in. So I did this in Illustrator and brought it in. Now, when you tap with two fingers, it's going to invert the colors from black and white. Whatever is black is gonna be showing up like this or whatever the negative color. 
whatever is white is not going to show up or it's going to just fill whatever. So I brought this brush in from Illustrator very easily. And the reason why the brush doesn't just stay vertical like it should be like this is because I've got this setting on called Azimuth. And I don't know how to say it, but it's there. You can see it, I can see it, it's right there. Now without this on, you can see that the brush is going to look really strange the whole time. It's just going to be on one angle the whole time, no matter where my brush pen is or whichever angle my pen's facing, right? So the reason why we have this on, when we press it, you can see the actual shape changes. It's because wherever the brush is, is going to be where the actual shape is. So you can see here, I can go straight, I can go flat, this way, this way, this way. You can see how it works. Now this is how we use brush pens is we have our hands in certain positions to create that brush pen feel. So we have the angles all the same like that. Now to create this, you just repeat the process, but the shape source is where I brought in from photographs here. Now that is the main difference by also in the shape source, as you can see, I've put some lines in there and that's what gives us some of these little subtle textures that you're seeing here, right there. And that gives us a nice little texture to work around uh, within Illustrator. But the rest of it is pretty much self-explanatory. You just play around in these different things here. You can go to my website, download a brush and you can literally check out what I've done here. And these brushes are like dirt cheap. I just put them up there for a few pounds for you to get and to use. And you can use them wherever you want in your Procreate or however you want. And you can change every aspect of them. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed learning a bit about the brush pen and how to create brush pens or brushes for lettering in Procreate, then subscribe to this channel. I put up videos about hand lettering, logo design, and tech for designers, which is something that's starting very soon. If you missed the tech review of the iPad Pro new one, then go ahead and look at it at the end of this video. It's a good video. I hope you like it. Also stick around for some videos on Apple accessories, kind of like the pencil. Also the pencil case that I've got here, which I'll reveal in another video. I've also got cases as well as bags, as well as stands and everything that companies have sent that I'm going to be reviewing. Well, not reviewing, but just telling you about and showing you my thoughts on them. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If any of you are interested in learning UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design bootcamp intended to get you a full time job in the industry. You can learn more about this at devmountain.com or click the link in the description below.